Hello, everyone. Welcome to this edition of Good Egg Live. I'm Annie Dickerson, and here with me is a very special guest, Dana Dunford, one of the founders of Hemlane. Dana, welcome to Good Egg Live. Great. Thanks so much for having me, Annie. Of course. I got to say, I used to own um, a small portfolio of rental properties and it was everybody here knows, uh, probably knows my stories about rental property disasters and trying my hand at asset management. I would do this thing with my property managers where, you know, I would look at the numbers and, you know, I'd be like, oh, we're not doing well. Okay. We got to set up weekly calls. And so we would do weekly calls, we'd get everything in shape. And then after a, a few weeks, you know, a few months of that, I'd be like, you know, things are looking good. Let's move to bi-weekly now. And then let's move to once a month. And then inevitably things would slip again. And of course, you know, there were disasters along the way too, theft, vandalism, all sorts of crazy stories. But, um, you know, it was, uh, it, when I, when I took a look at Hemlane, um, I was so pleasantly surprised that you guys have taken technology and brought it into the equation and allowed technology to come in in a way to simplify the whole property management process. And, you know, we were talking before we started the webinar, I've sold off all my rental properties at this point because I knew that it wasn't the right fit for me at the time. But now that I've seen Hemlane, I'm like, holy cow, I'm ready to get back in the game, I'm ready to get my next rental <laughs> property because you guys have made it so easy. So I'm thrilled for you to share more about your experience and to share a little bit about uh, Hemlane as well. So Dana, take Great. it away. Great. Well, thanks so much, Annie. And you're not alone. Um, we hear a lot and and we're going to go kind of into the details of of remotely managing your own assets, so your own properties, whether they're down the street or whether they're in another state, I always say you should be able to do everything from your phone and have the right local support who can help you. And that is the beauty of technology and what technology can do. Um, I think it, it, it's very misunderstood because remote property management doesn't mean someone is not there. Remote management, you still physically need humans there. Like if this is real estate, you can't have a robot do your showings, all of that kind of stuff. And, and so we'll walk through a little bit of more of that detail um, but what you were saying about managing your property manager, we've heard that time and time again um, from our investors who use Hemlane. They say, wow, I used to have to manage my manager and you know have weekly calls, have monthly calls. Now I don't need to. Everything's transparent. I see everything in the system. If I want to drill into a request and see exactly how it was handled, every communication with the tenant, every call, I can see everything there if I want to, or if I want to step out of the details, I can. And um, so really the goal for us is saying, hey, your best investments are not in your backyard. They are most likely not in the city you live in. And so instead, think about how you can invest somewhere else, achieve um, financial freedom faster and not have to worry about the management. Um, so I'll talk about remote management hacks. These are some hacks that we've learned that you can implement in your process um, and, uh, and then uh, see who has questions. Um, just a little bit about me. Um, I actually started in consumer tech, so I didn't start in real estate. Um, I was at Apple I'm doing new product introductions. My sister was the one who got me passionate about real estate. This is during the 2009. I actually think the fourplex was purchased in 2010, but market correction um, and realized, wow, um, why doesn't anyone talk about owning and operating real estate? This is incredible what it can do, obviously, for your cash flow, um, your financial freedom, et cetera. Um, I actually transitioned job-wise over to Nest. Nest is a home technology company. And so that kind of got me into this, like, hey, it's so easy to see everything going on in my home, my personal home. I can, you know, shut off um, my um, heat, turn it back on, et cetera, whenever I want from my phone. But I here I am with rental properties in Denver, and it's like, we're still hiding keys, you know, we're still having to show up for showings and tenants aren't showing up. Like there's just so much wrong with this situation. Um, and so that actually kind of got me excited about the future, uh, which uh, uh, put me to uh, transition over to building um, Hemlane. I'm one of the co-founders 
And um, we support owners in managing rental properties. We have uh, 27,000 that we help manage. Um, and that's everything from 24 seven repair coordination to finding and placing a tenant. Um, and then obviously most importantly to us is not the number of rentals we have, it's actually the reviews and the NPS. And so really making sure that our um, customers are, are satisfied um, just to give you a little bit of context on that, a traditional property manager has an average NPS score of seven, ours is over 60. And so we always look to say, how do we do better? How do we delight um, and um, surprise our customers? And as you can imagine, that's not just layering technology onto the existing industry, it's actually changing it. Um, and then oh, and that's um, just seven, seven yeah. out of a hundred, right? That's That's not seven out of eight or seven out of 10. <laughs> Well, so yeah, the seven, it's an interesting with the NPS because you can have negative NPSs. It's based on how many promoters you have versus how many detractors you mm. have. Um, but yeah, I think like a company like Apple, don't quote me on this, but I think they're at like a, a 28 NPS or whatever. It's like it. how many people feel neutral about your product? How many absolutely love it? How many absolutely really hate it? And that's yeah. how they they come up with the the score. And so that's really important to us, um, like having five star reviews, having that that um, that trust from our users every day. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then I'm um, just personally, um, I'm sure many of you listening um, want to kind of know wh where I'm based, what I do. Um, I'm a complete adrenaline junkie. Um, I live in San Francisco uh, with my husband, and then we have four-year-old twins. Um, so with that, I want to get started and test your PM knowledge. Um, so my first question, you can put it in the chat as well. Um, and um, if you're listening to the recording, uh, but oh gosh, guys, I just gave it away. Um, hopefully no one saw that. Um, upgrades. Um, so this is going to be testing how much you know about property management knowledge. We're going to start with accounting. You want to remove and replace the rotting brick and mortar on your exterior walls of your rental property. Would you consider this a repair or a capital expense? Anybody wanna weigh in? Feel free to use the chat. You got any guesses? For, for those of you who said repair, you're correct. Um, <laughs> and so the, these, these types, is that what you guessed, Danny? I, I was going to say, I was going to say capital, uh, capital expense. Actually, this is why I'm no good at this. So uh -huh. I'm learning right along all of you. <laughs> our, our goal is that you don't need to know this. We help uh, teach you all of this and tell you <laughs> all of this. Um, this, this is actually from our accountant, our real estate accountant. Um, but it's, it's very similar to like your floors. If you were going to do just, you had some planks that you had to replace or like a little patch of the carpet, but you're not replacing all of the carpet. If you're just removing and replacing some of the bricks, it's actually just a repair. If you're doing the entire outside, taking everything off and putting a whole new like facade on there, that would be a different story. That would be a capital expense. Um, okay, my next question, I've got three for you. Animals versus pets. Um, so obviously there's something called emotional support animals. And um, it's a, a, a pet rent has been something that, you know, I think eight years ago was not as popular as you see now. And now everyone adds pet rent on so much that we have an entire thing when you go through our marketing and advertising of do you have pets or do you accept pets? If so, how much for the pet rent? And then we also talk about emotional support animals um, and that you can't charge pet rent on them. So my question here is, um, true, uh, true or false, you can decline an emotional support pit bull. Ooh, this is a tricky one. Anybody got any guesses? Annie, Annie what's I your feel guess? Like, oh, I feel like, I mean, in life, everything is, is in the gray. So I'm going to go with it depends, but I don't know what it depends on. <laughs> You're right. It is depend. Um, it, and so with this one, it's an interesting one. Emotional um, support animals, you can't decline them. Unless there's a caveat in there, you can decline them if they have some sort of financial burden to you or obligation that would open you up to liability. If you are a landlord, you have to check your landlord insurance. If your landlord insurance says we do not accept aggressive breeds, and a pit bull is considered an aggressive breed. So our landlord insurance will not cover if there is a pit bull in your property. You can actually decline it. You can say this is actually a financial risk because if something happens with your emotional support animal, I'm not caught, I'm not um, 
covered and I am liable, you can do that and you can decline them. And so all of this kind of stuff, we definitely try to make sure, especially on our leasing coordination side, all of this is built into there and into the process flow and the technology. So you don't have to, you kind of take the guessing work out, out of it per se. All That's right. The uh, yeah. last, take the guesswork out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Last one for you, non-payment of rent. Which of the following should you do when the tenant stops paying rent? A, turn off the utilities to allow partial payments, both one or two or none of the above. Ooh, this reminds me of high school biology. I had a high school biology teacher who always used to do pop quizzes like this, where it was like A, B, A and B, A and C, <laughs> or it was like, you really had yeah, to Yeah, totally. <laughs> so let me think, what would, what should you do when a tenant stops paying rent? Um, I'm going to say, I mean, I've learned my lesson. I would just turn everything off and throw them out the next day. Is that not the right answer? <laughs> <laughs> no. So the answer is none of the above. And, and here is above. why. One, mm. it's illegal to turn off the utilities because then you're violating the lease. So even like if you're paying for the utilities, right, it's in your name, they're not paying for it. You still have to go through the legal process, formally serving the eviction notice for a rent violation, getting your court date, going to the hearing. If you go through and shut off your utilities, say you don't have something sub or you have to pay for it, then those types of things become where now suddenly you're in the wrong and the court could not rule in your favor. And so always make sure you follow the lease. So when you go there to court, you say, hey, listen, I'm following the lease. This is the contract we have. There's one party not following it, it's not both. The partial payments is an interesting one. So we in our system by default, you can accept partial payments if you want, but we strongly encourage you don't. And if it's a roommate situation, they figure that out. Um, you don't want to accept partial payments. And the reason you don't want to is let's just say Annie pays me $2 of rent this month. Legally, I cannot serve an eviction notice. So now she's there for a whole nother 30 days or 31 days or 28 days until I can actually go through the formal process. And so we always say, tell the tenant, if it takes you an extra day, great. We're going to start the process. You know, we're here to help. You can go to this rental assistance program. Even if we serve the eviction notice, you might thank us because you can take that to some church, to some rental assistance program, and they might give you the money to pay your rent to us but we're not gonna allow partial payments. We're not gonna let you pay a little bit from your bank account because then what's gonna happen is we can't formally serve that notice and everything is delayed. And so um, from that perspective, it's uh, none of the above and our system is, is set up for that. So great. Why are we talking about remote uh, landlord hacks? Um, so the first one is, is the question that you always toggle by close to home or by out of state. I highly encourage uh, people to look out of state as well. And the reason is, is if you're looking just close to your home, it's sort of like my equivalent on the investment side is stocks. Let's just say you wanted to buy a stock. If you can only buy in your area, then you haven't one diversified. And then two, you also, um, it might not be the best investment. All the stocks in your area might be declining. You might be in the tech scene where obviously with interest rates and all of that and a, a correction in the marketplace, it's not, uh, maybe it's not the best place to invest. And so I always say, just don't buy only close to home. You definitely should look close to home, but you should also consider out of state. The other one is self-managed versus using a property manager. And so many people toggle with this so much that um, uh, I, I always say that um, the, your geographic location has never been less important. And then this question of self-managed versus using a property manager most people, 72% of rental owners don't use a property manager. And so wow. from that perspective, it is one of those things where when you think about it, you say, oh, okay, I could self-manage and I could self-manage remotely. But unless you knew what goes on in the world and how people think about it, um, you, you kind of put yourself in this category of I couldn't remotely manage, but you can. Um, and so you're basically not alone there. And then this geographic location has not been less important because of technology, thanks to technology. So let's go through managing um, your rental property hacks, um, five hacks for you. 
So the first one is, is use the same tools that property managers have access to. This is such a cool part about this day and age. It used to be that a software to advertise your rental property, collect rent, do repair requests, all of that was only built for the big guys, for the large property managers. But now you have access to it. And I always say, tenants only look at the photos, they don't read the text. So like, if you have a washing machine, take a picture of it, don't write it in some long paragraph, right? Um, we use AI to attract tenants. So we'll go through and help with all your listing descriptions, how it all looks, all of that, to just make sure that you put your best foot forward. And then um, three list everywhere. <laughs> so a lot of common mistakes is the landlord will just go online and they'll just list it on Zillow Rental Manager or they'll just list it on apartments.com or they'll just list it on realtor.com. Well, the tenants in your area may not be looking at that website. They may be, hey, I only look at Zillow or I only look through realtor.com. And so that's why you want to really publish your listing everywhere to get as many eyeballs and tenant inquiries as possible. The other one is text. So we have um, automated text messages in our system. Um, and then we also have when you send a personalized message, it goes as a text message and an email. So it does both to the tenant. Texts have a higher open rate. And so if you're looking for tenants to be fast to respond to you, it has a 98% open rate versus emails, traditional emails to tenants have a 22% open rate. And so really make sure that you're using all sorts of different modes of communication. A lot of tenants tend to be younger. They use their phones. They're not an email like you and me. Hack number two, and if anyone has any questions, just feel free to put them in the chat. Um, hack number two is self-guided tours to place tenants 33% faster. And so you can get tenants into your property faster if you do self-guided tours. I was a huge, um, um, uh, I basically was anti-self-guided um, tours for so long. I said, there's no way you should do this. You're going to have squatters in your property. As you guys know, there's a, there's a lot in the news these days, especially in the past, um, I would say three months ago about squatters and properties and squatter rights. Um, but what was really interesting is, is we use both real estate agents and self-guided tour technology and an owner can select one or the other. And what we found was when we started doing an alpha and an alpha is basically launching a product to a couple of customers you trust. And then you give us your real feedback on it because we might not launch this product, but you give us your feedback on what you think of this. And what we found was that we could get reduced vacancy by over 10 days just by doing self-guided tours in that it wasn't any less safe as long as you had a good process in place. So what we do is we never publish that it's a self-guided tour. That's just going to attract squatters. So don't write on your listing description, self-guided tours available. Um, then you have your keypad or your lockbox that is single use codes. Those codes change every single time a tenant is in there. That makes it more secure. You offer showing seven days of the week. I'll have a, a slide on that later. So every day a tenant can get in, they can get in faster. And then as they're booking the showing, you make them go through an identity verification on their phone. They scan their ID and they scan their face. And in doing that, it will come back to verify who they are. Now you have their ID on file confirming it's them. And they're the only one you text that code to. And you only text it to them when they're on site and for that time period. We found this helps place tenants faster, and I'll tell you a little bit more why. First, you can host showing seven days of the week. You're not reliant on saying who's scheduled, who's available, and when. If you look at tenants in our system of the 27,000 rental properties we have, when a tenant inquires about a property, 28% book to see it within the next 24 hours. So today is Wednesday. That means 28% of your tenant inquiries who come in today are going to book a showing for today or tomorrow. Then by um, Friday, 44% of yours, so almost half of them are going to view your property. If you only host open house on Saturdays, you might have already lost that tenant because they came and signed our property. Our property is right next to yours. After Friday, we have an application to them. We tell them to do the background and credit check. They're like, oh, I'm already accepted to this property. Why would they go and see Annie's property that has a showing on Saturday? And so while I was very skeptical of it, I'm actually very bullish on self-guided tours if you do them right. I think a lot of landlords try to 
try to do a scrappy way of being like, I'm not going to verify the tenant's identity and all of that, but this definitely works. Yeah, this is so this good. And it, it speaks to my, I can totally see how if I were to put myself in the tenant's shoes I, or even when I'm buying a house, I'm so impatient. I see the listing and I want to yeah. go like, right now. And so I love how this makes it possible for people to same day or next day be same able to day, go yeah. and do it totally. themselves. And so I love that. And you just want to make sure it's secure. You want to make sure you have, we have the driver's license encrypted in our system. Their, um, uh, their uh, um, scan of their face as well to confirm it matches. So we do all of that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, I think, I, you know, where I've seen a lot of the squatters, when you look at the tools they're using, it's tools that say self-guided tour available. And it says that you don't have to say that in your ad. You don't have to put it anywhere. You just say, hey, we can show it to you anytime. Let us know when. And as they're going through that booking process, then you can go ahead and, um, and then uh, let them know, hey, we're doing this identity verification because of uh, it's a self-guided tour. So that's been, that's been really helpful for us. The other thing, this was really interesting to me. So when we started self-guided tours, we actually staffed so much of our team on Saturday and Sunday. And the reason was my hypothesis is most people want to see the property on Saturday and Sunday. So all of these numbers, there's a lot here. So I'm not trying to take you back to math class. Um, or, or physics with all of my A, B, C, D questions. But I, I do want to, I do want to make sure that um, you guys are provided this value of looking at when people book showings. So all of these numbers here, this 0.3%, 0.5%, if you take all these numbers, they add up to 100%. So we do it based on the time zone of these properties. So of the 27,000 uh, rental properties we have, when do people most often book showings? And what is really interesting is you'll see here, it's like, even on Sunday, you'll see some 1% and stuff, but look at this, Wednesday's higher here, 1.7%, 1.8%. Here, you've got 2% here on Fridays. And so it's really dispersed. It's almost like people just want to see it after they've inquired about the property. Great, let me go ahead and set it up. And so that actually changed our strategy because once we started getting this data in and we started self-guided tours over two and a half years ago, but once we started getting this data in, we started saying, oh, no, actually, we need to ev evenly distribute our team because of these types of things and, and looking at the numbers and the stats and, and all of that. Um, this is a really interesting stat. So this is from 2020, and it was said only 80% of tenants this is the only one I could find online said 80% of tenants are comfortable with self-guided tours. So I'm like, shoot, 20% aren't, that's not good. You want it to be closer to 100%. And so the, what we do is we just look at our own data. How many people book showings? How many people fall off of the process as they're trying to book a showing because they find out it's a self-guided tour? Let's go ahead and call those people. And let's actually look at our own numbers, not some stupid survey that's out there, but let's go ahead and look at our own numbers. And there have been very few cases, I'd say it's uh, it's less than a handful of people who say, I'm not comfortable with self-guided tours and I definitely wouldn't take one after everything you've told me about it. It is very, very rare. And so while this was from 2020, we're in 2024, we're post COVID and also we're in the convenience culture, which I'm about to talk about, about how people want things now. And that has made um, self-guided tours where people are much more comfortable than they otherwise would be. So um, great, let's go ahead and go into hack number three, uh, specialized virtual and chatbot assistance 24 seven. So we have um, virtual assistants um, and virtual assistants are specialized in their trade. So for example, in inspections, a virtual assist assistants who can book inspections for your property, we do troubleshooting. Um, so these are, this is a chatbot that will close 7% of requests before they even get to human because they go through with the tenant and let them know what to do. Um, and then also um, we have a network of service professionals that our repair coordinators work with. So I'll go through all of that. But I think when you think about operating properties remotely, you want to be as passive as possible. And so you can use assistance like VAs to basically help you with it. The biggest thing is that they have to be able to know what they're doing. So we consider them personal concierge. Um, our leasing coordinators are trained in fair housing and leasing administration. So everything I mentioned of those questions I had in the quiz, all the way to do you accept section eight, all of that 
is part of the process that leasing coordinators are trained on. What, what is interesting is these um, assistants that we have, these rental assistants we have, are even better than the owners because this is what they do all day long. Most real estate investors have some other job or do um, renovations or other things that they're specialized in. They don't know what fair housing laws are in the county and, and states. And so from that perspective, we have these assistants that follow the specific playbook set out for them on that. Um, we also use chatbots when needed. Uh, tenants want things right away really quickly. And so we go ahead and use them, one, not only to close out requests, but also to de-escalate things. You would be shocked how many tenants when like there's water leaking, it's like, okay, is it active leak? Like, or is it just like a drip? Can you just put a bucket underneath it? Blah, 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 blah. Everything to de-risk something or make sure they understand, is this a question for a property manager? Is this a question for the fire department? Or if this is a question for the police? A lot of times they don't know that. And so that is something where we're able to assist them with that. And then we have 24-7 um, repair coordination. And so um, virtual assistants that are trained specifically in repairs who used to be general contractors, handyman, et cetera, who can basically go out and speak that language for you is totally helpful. Where they're also really helpful is on price with the network of service professionals. No, this is probably too much money. That's outrageous that the, the service professional is charging that. And so really making sure you can get that. All of this stuff can be done virtually. This stuff in person is actually having the physical inspector out there, having the physical plumber or electrician. But all of this stuff can be done remotely. And that's a great hack. Um, another one is outsourcing difficult conversations. It's when you get difficult conversations that you realize you don't want to be an investor anymore. And so from that perspective, we go ahead, we have um, uh, pre-eviction and eviction guard. And essentially, anytime your tenant is late on rent, we go ahead and do the calls. And basically what we do with the calls is we don't attack the tenant and say, why aren't you paying rent, Annie? I need your rent tomorrow. It's, hey, Annie, this is Dana from Hemlane. I, you know, was looking in our system and I saw your rent hasn't been paid. Can you, um, can you tell me a little bit more of how I can help you? And suddenly that change, and these are mediators who do this. So they're trained and licensed mediators. And suddenly that changes because now you suddenly know the tenant's going to open up to you. Oh, I just lost my job. Or, oh, I totally forgot to pay my rent. Or, no, I'm going through some really difficult times. I'm not going to be able to pay this at all. And based on figuring out this stuff and have they looked at rental assistance programs and do they have family members who can support them? And do they know that there is a late fee charge? By doing all that up front, you know whether or not to post that notice. And you also know what is the likelihood that this is going to go to court. And so that is really helpful because it's very objective and has clear paths of what is the best outcome for you. And also what's the best outcome for your tenant um, and how we can help them. And so we really see it as a way to help owners by having mediators with all of these difficult conversations. And then hack number five is taxes. The real estate professional status is my favorite. It's something where as you build your rental properties, you can be considered your own property manager. You put it in its own separate LLC and suddenly your home office, all of this kind of stuff can be deducted. And so with that, um, you do need 50% um, of your, pers your personal services and business must be in real estate. You must perform 750 hours in real estate and you must materially uh, participate in real estate activities. But we've seen our um, customers incredibly successful with this because they manage their properties from our platform. They have the VAs and then the on-ground support we have everything from the agents to the service professional network to the inspectors to do all of that stuff for them, but they can still qualify for this real estate professional status. Um, and then obviously bonus depreciation. I love that about it as well. So with that, um, I want to talk about why this is more important than ever to master all of this. The first thing I want to talk about here is your tenants live in what we call the convenience culture. The convenience culture is basically this era, era of instant gratification. They want things done right now. And they assume that they will go ahead and get things done right now. And um, I'll give you a couple of examples of that to help understand how extreme our world has become. Um, first, meet Natasha. She is, um, I think, a reporter at Washington Post. 
And she was just looking at kind of what she does and how she spends her money. She basically said, I wrote a check of $453. She lives in New York with her thumbs because she wasn't even tracking, you know, how much she was spending that week. And then Seamless, it's like DoorDash, right? Um, And just spent that on convenience, $206 that week, just basically on, oh, I need a, a, a burger. Oh, I want a pizza type thing. And then rent, she didn't realize why she was living paycheck to paycheck. You're going to see this more and more with tenants. Tenants are living in properties for longer. Their rentals, because of this, they're part of this convenience culture where they're paying a premium to get things faster. And then they're living paycheck to paycheck and not able to afford a home. This is one of my favorite numbers, 1.6 billion. So Amazon did a study based on um, if their website were to load one second slower they estimated they would lose $1.6 billion in annualized revenue. And this just tells you how crazy our world is. People want things now. They, they want it fast. And so with your tenants, the same thing. If they're having to call a number instead of just working directly with a chatbot or a VA to get things done and a very specialized one who actually knows what they're talking about, they're going to get upset. If they're having to deal with you and you're dealing with them on a Saturday, that's not fun Saturday for you. And so really tapping into this convenience culture of how do you make it better for tenants, you're going to win so much more as a landlord. Um, This is, uh, these are some of my favorites. This was a younger generation one where (laughs) basically she had um, uh, fed her kids and then they had just gotten an order of two kids meals to their front door and was like, what happened? Like they texted their grandma to, to basically get that order for them. And this is like, people want things, they want things their way and they want things now. And so that is very much we're setting expectations up front and having a really clear process and knowing the process better than tenants is going to be very helpful to make it very smooth for you. Um, this was another one that I loved um, from DoorDash where they wanted to drop it off at their school office but wanted the DoorDash driver. By the way, these are great chats to follow. It's the DoorDash um, driver group on like Facebook. And um, they wanted it, their order dropped off at the office and asked for the DoorDash driver to pretend to be their parent. And the DoorDash driver is like, I'm 27 years old. I can't really be your parent. Can I be a sibling? Um, and he's like, yep, okay, I'm going to be your big bro. Because obviously the school does not want kids door dashing their lunch. But this is where our generation, the older generation and the younger generation have this huge gap of how they want things. They want that convenience. They want things exactly how they, um, 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 exactly how they envision them. And if they don't like the school lunch, they're just going to go order DoorDash. And so the reason that this is so important is because if you don't, um, if you don't focus on providing that convenience and setting those expectations up front, I think being a landlord is much more hard than it otherwise would be. And then the other one is out of a thousand consumers, um, this was a, a survey that was recently done. They asked them how much they thought they were spending online on certain things versus how much they were actually spending. This is what they self-reported versus what the actuals were. So it's almost double of what people thought they were spending. And so this paycheck to paycheck makes me very bullish of saying buy more rental properties, et cetera, and actually provide better ways. We even have weekly payments in the system. If you need tenants to pay weekly so that they don't get this large lump sum and say, I can't pay it because I don't have my rent. Um, So all of that is incredibly important. Um, So with that, I'll go into um, here what we can offer for you. Um, So we do modern property management. We have specialized leasing coordinators, repair coordinators, uh, mediators, et cetera, within the Hemlane app. We're trusted by over 27,000 rentals. We have uh, just about 1,700 local agents. And we start at $30 a month for our uh, management plans. There's also a free plan. So if you're just looking to advertise your property to all the listing websites, et cetera, you can definitely use that free plan. Um, And then don't take our word for it. Um, You can look at our customer reviews online. Here's some um, examples of it. Uh, 2000 page property management book that I don't have to read because it's built into the software. Super important to us. Um, David, being a a client of Hemling, I can't imagine investing in more residential properties without them. 
And then um, this is just to show as you scale, we can scale with you a great product that comes with ex excellent customer service and communication. Um, so you can go ahead and check out of our re reviews online. And really what we want you to do is do what you love. Um, so with that, we'd love to connect with you. If you'd love to schedule a demo, here's a QR code that you can do that. You can also go to hemlane.com. Um, just mention um, Good Egg um, on it because you will get a discount um, if you do. So please definitely mention that um, when you sign up. And Andy, I'll let you take it from there if you have any questions. Fantastic. Well, to everybody who's listening, whether you're here live with us or you're watching the recording, I mean, we always talk at Good Egg, we always talk about how, you know, Real estate investing is such a great way to build wealth, but you've got to find the way that makes it work for you and your lifestyle. And so to the extent that you can find that easy button, um, that helps you to make it sustainable and helps you to fit it into your life rather than you having to bend back, bend over backwards to try to fit real estate into your life. And so syndications is a great way to do that. But through tools like Hemlane, this makes rental property investment easy as well. And so, you know, this makes it possible for you to diversify across not only passive investments, but also rental property investments, and they each have their own merits. And Dana and I were just talking about this the other day, you know, there's different reasons why you might invest in a rental property versus investing in a, let's say a multifamily syndication. Each has their own merits and each has their tax benefits, as Dana talked about. Um, but together, that's where you get the perfect storm for building your long-term wealth. So Dana, this has been fantastic. Um, there, I've learned so much. I learned a ton just with the opening questions. I learned a lot, but there's so many nuances that you reminded me of Um as far as investing in rental properties and managing rental properties, so much that comes up and it's great to have a partner along the way, whether it's a property manager or a team like Hemlane supporting you and in your corner throughout as those questions and issues come up. So thank you so much. Um, does anybody, anybody here with us live, if you have any questions, feel free to put them into the chat. Otherwise, you know, definitely take a screenshot or keep this uh, information that Dana's got on screen now. If you do have any rental properties, definitely check out Hemlane. Or if you're thinking about, maybe this has inspired you to say, you know what, I think I can do rental properties now. Um, and definitely check them out. Um, but in the meantime, let me just, and Dana, you I believe you can keep your slides up. I'm going to just share my screen. I think I can also share. Um, just to wrap up for the people who are here or watching the recording, um, just to remind you of all of, you know, Good Egg Live is just one of the things that we offer across our community and community is so big to us here at Good Egg because we know that whether you're investing in rental properties or syndications, it's hard to do it on your own, especially when all those issues come up. And so you want a community around you to support you, to hear what others are doing, to be able to ask your questions. And so we have a variety of different offerings. Good Egg Live is what you're in now, but we also have have our weekly Good Egg popovers where you can just drop in and meet our team, meet other investors and ask your questions. We have our Laundry and Learn where Julie and I fold our family's laundry every other week and uh, we do it live. I almost feel weird when I don't fold my laundry on a live stream now. I'm like, wait, I'm wasting this laundry. Um, but we fold laundry. It's like a lunch and learn, but with laundry. Um, so you're invited to that as well. And then we have our Life and Money Show podcast, as well as our YouTube channel to support you with additional content and education. And I know this is a lot to track, so you can just go to goodegginvestments.com slash events to get more information about all of these, as well as our upcoming in-person gatherings too. And finally, if you want to get in touch with us, um, just you can reach out to us anytime. We're at investor relations at goodegginvestments.com. You can schedule a call with us. 
you can check out all that we offer on our website. Um, we're always here for you. And if you're, again, if you're investing in rental properties, definitely reach out to Dana and her team. I had an opportunity to do a demo of their product and I was blown away. You guys are definitely going to want to check this out. They have put so much, not only hard work, but heart into their product and you can really see it because it's so easy to use, so streamlined, both for the uh, the investor, the owner, as well as on the, the tenant side. So I'm so glad, Dana, that I got a chance to get to know um, all, all that you do. Um, and I think you and, uh, or Hemlane and Goodegg are very much on the same path as far as changing the world with, through real estate, through helping people build wealth through real estate. So thank you again for being thank here, Dana. Thank you for everyone, um, for coming. Thank you for watching the recordings and uh, reach out if uh, if you need anything. We'll be here for you. All right. Great. Thanks, Thanks so much, everyone. Annie. Bye.